Hello there. Welcome to the mating edition of Issues with GD. It's a review of topical issues in the news during the outgoing week by our seasoned journalist and political analyst, TVC's Babajide Koladi Otitoju. It's an honor to be your anchor, guiding you through GD's informed thoughts on the vital news bits and helping you make sense of it all. And so, in the outgoing week, Three major strikes by government workers dominated the headlines, and we'll look at all of them one by one. One, the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria, Jusung, is striking over the delay in the implementation of financial autonomy for the judiciary. Two, the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, ASUP, is on strike to demand the implementation of a new salary scheme for polytechnic lecturers. Three, Doctors are on strike to protest, among other things, the non-payment of salaries of three to five months of some house officers and non-recruitment of house officers. Also in the news, the attack by unknown gunmen on the Evo Correctional Center, following which 85 of the nearly 2,000 inmates have returned voluntarily. Welcome to the program. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. All right. Thank you for joining us and welcome, Babajidi. It's an honor to be doing this with you. Thank you. And I can't have a hope for a better person to, to put me through all of this. Oh, fantastic. Mm. What an endorsement. It's no mystery anyway. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, hope deferred makes the heart weak. And uh, the hope for financial autonomy for the judiciary is long in coming. BK, take it over. You see, I am particularly happy with the judiciary workers that they've elected to go on strike because in our country strike appears to be the only language that our leaders understand the constitution says clearly that the heads of courts or the heads of the judiciary shall be in charge of its finances there's no reason in the world for governors to continue to pretend over financial matters as they relate to the judiciary. So when the president came up with the executive order on June 5, 2020, I thought it was only amplifying what was already stated in the constitution. And there had been two court cases that the governors lost. The first was the judgment given by Justice Ademola, who is now retired in which he affirmed that the executive has no power to hold on to the funds of the judiciary in line with the autonomy that the constitution confers on the judiciary they lost that matter they never appealed and then the governor of kogi state because the late chief judge of the state justice ajana decided a matter in favor of his enemy, Senator Dino Melaye. He granted Dino Melaye bail. For that reason, he decided to punish the judge. And what did he do? He seized the subvention of the judiciary for about a year. Now, that can only happen in a country like ours, where impunity works on both legs. Hmm. So, the law is there. The Jusun guys are on the right path. These governors must be compelled to yield the funds meant for the judiciary to the heads of the uh, of the courts in the various states. That's the registrar. If the federal uh, government does not tamper with funds meant for the judiciary and it, it hands them over to the heads of the courts. They should be able to do that at state level. And that's what this fight is about. I expect the CGN to back the, the, the judiciary workers so that victory can go the way of, of the judiciary. If they should enjoy their autonomy it's, it's the as right. enshrined in the constitution. That's, that's my belief. And there should be no going back on this. 
governors are arrogating too much powers to themselves. Immediately the president gave, uh, came up with the executive order, they went to meet him. If I were the president, I would have turned them back. I would have chased them away from uh, the presidential villa. What were they coming to do? I would have asked them, why do you want to see me? You want to see me over an, uh, another... Already decided approved? by the court. Please go back. I'm not prepared to see you. But of course, the president doesn't have, in most cases, uh, in his actions, we do not see evidence of good advice. Otherwise, they should have turned back those governors. By now, they will have implemented uh, the, the executive order. And the, what the president said is, look, if you do not comply, the accountant general of the federation shall have the power to take from source what is meant for the judiciary and send to the various heads of the judiciary in the 36 states of the federation. The president must show courage to allow the Accountant General of the Federation to, 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 to do that. And we hope that uh, all arms of government concerned will summon the political will to execute this in favor of the judiciary. Uh, let's progress quickly to an arm of the tertiary education sector that is bedeviled by many challenges. Polytechnic lecturers, they are on strike, demanding better pay. A, a lot of the strikes that we witness in our country uh, about the welfare of um, of the workers. They are pressure groups, whichever way you look at them. And pressure, group, uh, pressure groups work for the welfare of their members. So I have no quarrel with the decision that these are soup guys have taken. Now, people say, oh, generally they are looking for better pay. The issue revolves around welfare, not simply better pay. For example, they are talking about some schools, especially state polytechnics, where people are being held in excess of 12 month salary. There's no reason to set up a polytechnic if you can't guarantee that its workers will be paid as and when due. They, you must pay the worker regularly and promptly. Even the Quran says that the worker deserves his wages before the sweat of his body gets dry. So you wonder what's going on. If governors who claim that they are good Muslims, they are good Christians, how come they allow workers to suffer in this way? The president said some time ago that he was surprised or he has been wondering how uh, these people manage to sleep, how governors manage to sleep without paying salaries. So they are concerned about that. Then of course the issue of retirement age, 65 years retirement age, that has not be implemented and they are saying no this has to change they also want an end to uh, appointment of rectors that are not qualified so they have all kinds of issues that they want uh, addressed uh, but these are just uh, some of the uh, uh, salient issues you can't owe a worker for 24 months it makes no sense if, if you cannot pay then scrap those polytechnics so i i, I support the action that that super has taken I think that the Nigerian worker, wherever he's working, deserves to be looked after the right way. Absolutely. Um, as we move on to Dr. Strike now, the irony is not lost on Nigerians. Mr. President is receiving medical treatment abroad and doctors at home are on strike. Yes, um, although when you look at the reasons doctors are on strike, you see that it's basically about them basically about better pay, uh, increased allowances and all that. But at the end of the day, they talked about the need for the health system in Nigeria to improve in this manner that we can have universal health coverage for all. So which means they try to give us something, uh, no matter how little that the rest of us can chew on. But it's all about improved welfare for them, especially the the um, um, the people you refer to as house officers, that is resident doctors in training. What they want is a situation in which government would have a, a, a central system whereby they will be able to post doctors to different health institutions across the country. The same way we have NYC. Up to now. That has not happened. And the decision, the Federal Executive Council agreed since 2017 that this should happen. So, 
2017, you refuse to do anything about it and you are surprised that these guys are on strike. There was a notice that was issued in January that was, the ultimatum was supposed to expire on March 31st. In, uh, among the issues that they came up with was the issue of hazard allowance. You are paying a patry 5,000 naira as hazard allowance to doctors. You refuse to pay um, uh, allowance for doctors who are taking care of COVID-19 patients. You agreed that you would do all of that. These days, government gets into negotiations with, with workers. They agree, they sign memorandum of, uh, of agreement and all that. And at the end of the day, until a, new, until a new notice for strike is issued, they will not do anything about, about agreements that they entered into without anybody uh, putting a gun to their to their neck. So this this is the reason for all of this. And these guys are saying, look, we don't want brain drain in that sector. If we address some of these problems, actually the welfare of of uh, the um, resident doctors, including those of them in training, we'll be able to stem brain drain, address all of these issues, so that things can get better. And then, of course, we have some uh, teaching hospitals like uh, the Abia State uh, University Teaching Hospital, where people are being old, where doctors are being old for up to 20 months. So it's, it's like, look, at federal level, there are problems. At state level, there are problems. But they are coming together to fight for everyone. 